Always Robert fiddles with his boxes. Oh, you know, no, no, just getting another Zevia. Uh, another... uh, zero calorie <laughs> I'd see a ginger root about beer. that if I were you. I know, right? Is that Zevia <sighs> returned? I'm afraid it has, Doctor. <laughs> I become I told addicted you to this keep stuff. Touching it there. I know. Hi, everyone. As here <laughs> from Heel versus Babyface, and of course, your host for what? 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 Toys. Uh, joined as ever by my beautiful co-host Robert Meyer Burnett. How are you doing, Robert? Hi, thank you for describing me as beautiful. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're a beautiful. Um, I mean, today, you know, today is an, a momentous day for a number of different reasons. But first and foremost, uh, an individual that I've had in all kinds of various action figure forms, all the way back to the '70s, bro, when Mego came out with the first. William Shatner's Captain Kirk action figure. Now he's 90 years old. The man, you know, at first I thought he was only going to go to the edge of space because the first Blue Origin rocket did not officially go into Bright space. Mm. Yeah, but but he this today we watched William Shatner go past what's called the Carmen line uh officially into space. And the Carmen line for those of you who don't know her, the Von Carmen line is an attempt to define a boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space, and it offers a specific definition. Let me get, forgive my pronunciation, the Federation, I kid you not, <laughs> the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, an international record-keeping body for aeronautics. Defining the edge of space is important for legal and regulatory purposes since aircraft and spacecraft fall under different jurisdictions in different countries and treaties. So the Carmen Line begins space at 100 kilometers or 54 nautical miles, 62 miles or 330,000 feet above Earth, Earth's mean sea level. And Shatner went beyond that. And that was going to be something. So William Shatner, Captain James T. Kirk, has officially been to space. Yeah. And uh, at 90 years old, bruh. I know. No, no. And he he walked out of that capsule after it <laughs> set down like a boss. Come on. And he was so about he nearly to get wiped out. Somebody bumped into him and they came out. They nearly wiped him out. The poor they guy. almost wiped him out. And you know what's interesting? Like, and here he was about to speak, and Jeff Bezos had to turn around and start sh spraying everyone with champagne. And I'm yeah. sure knowing a little bit about Shatner, he's like, Wow, here's my moment. And now you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> douse the crowd with champagne. But you know what? Shatner and professional. The professional that he is waited when Bezos turned back to him and talk about profundity. My man, Bill, man, uh, what he had to say about um, his perspective on life and how rocketing out of the Earth's atmosphere was blue. And then suddenly he's looking into the black void of death and it gave him yes, a new perspective. Is this death, he said, is this death? And I have to say, you know, God love the man. I did get to work with him and... Um, he he did not disappoint did not disappoint so um well, i mean shatner has been very open i mean he's been very open for quite a while now because he's now 90 yeah about a fear of death and fear of dying and um sort of what is what is beyond there and and uh i cannot even begin to imagine what it would be like to be here on terra firma to suddenly within literal minutes uh be hovering above earth breaking out of the atmosphere seeing the dark void of space and looking out and seeing this this ball that's just dangling in nothingness um yeah. And the insanity of seeing that uh, and, and how small you must feel as an individual uh, comparative to, to everything that is surrounding you. Um, it was wonderful to see Shatner emotional. It was, it was wonderful to see him cry. And um, I think I would have. I think it would have been... I, I I couldn't. I was so. I had such a big smile on my face throughout the whole process of uh, of just watching uh, this this brilliant this brilliant man who's brought so much uh, joy um, to me for for 
decades and decades now, pretty much all of my conscious life that I can remember, uh, seeing seeing Bill Shatner himself uh, become part of the legitimate I have been to space crew. And it, I mean, this guy climbed five flights of stairs to get, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I would have been able to do that. Um, <laughs> and he even and, mentioned and he, how that was difficult. He's like, when yeah, I was walking up just, that gantry. <laughs> and, I, and he's leading the way. I think he was uh, the first person walking up them. So, um, uh, yeah, it was just, it was incredible, incredible moment uh, in time. I'm so glad that I watched it live. I'm so glad that it got put off from yesterday uh, and put to today because uh, I, I got to seize it. Um, I know it was over so quickly, but in, in the same breath, it was just... I mean, just seeing the, the capsule taking off and then seeing the seeing it land, I mean, I was just like, what the fuck is... What have we been doing for the last since 1969 because it well, feels like we've been dicking about well and these boys are getting to work now dude i i agree you know america hasn't been back to the moon since 1972 as as i i feel that you know in a way we now live in a world not to get overly political but when we're spending time arguing about pronouns oh when when we've got people that are now building the future and building technology I don't think there's any better way to inspire all people than through the progression of the human experience. We've gone so far up our own asses that it's it's this navel gazing and and all of that. We forget, you know, going. You know what it made me think about, like when when Shatner was talking about, like he said something here uh, to quote him. He said, "I am overwhelmed. I had no idea." You know, when we were talking earlier before going. Well, you know, it's going to be different. Whatever is that phrase that you have, that you will have a different view of things that doesn't begin to explain, to describe it for me. And I think that that's um, what I would love to do is communicate as much as possible. It's the jeopardy. The moment you see the vulnerability of everything, it's so small. This air, which is keeping us alive, is thinner than your skin. Yeah. It's a sliver. It's immeasurably small. When you think in terms of the universe, it's negligible. Mars doesn't have any, nothing. I mean, when you think about when carbon dioxide changes to oxygen and the 20% that sustains our life, it's so thin. And, and, you know, and then you're just in blackness, you're in death. Uh, it's amazing that that kind of perspective and astronauts have spoken about that a lot. Like once you leave the confines of the earth, your perspective of life in the universe changes. And what Shatner was really saying is that he hopes at some point everybody can experience that. I mean, I don't know if in our lifetime. I ain't got 250 to grand uh, free at the moment, I'm afraid. But Yeah, uh, but still, I mean, that kind of perspective. I mean, I think that we, you know, it made me think about something. When I was in junior high school, I I got bullied a little bit. I got, because I had a big mouth, I got beat up. A lot of people called me. They, they, they didn't dig the fact that I loved Star Trek and Star Wars, but I had lots of friends, so I didn't really think about it much. It was just kind of a necessary thing. When I was in the seventh grade, the ninth graders used to, like somebody might dump their plate of spaghetti on, on my lap or something. Nice. But I would pick the spaghetti up and go throw it in some ninth grader's face. And after school, they... um you know, might have a little, a uh, little, little scrap <laughs> to the... say about that. <laughs> but it was really funny. There was one time when this, this, I won't use his last name, but his first name was Brad, and he was confronting <laughs> me in the, in the, in the um, hallways, and he was making a big show of it. And I was in the seventh grade, and he was, he was in a, um, a, 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 he was in a mood, and he, he was trying to call me a name, but he, he couldn't figure out what to call me. So I was like, you. Burnett, you're a, you're a, you're a, and, and everyone stopped and started not looking at me anymore. And they're looking at him and they're waiting for what kind of insult is this, is this ninth grader going to throw at this seventh grader? And he finally just said, you Star Wars freako. And everybody started laughing their ass off and he became the idiot. And I realized I was like, okay, 
I have these interests that are outside of me, whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars or movies, these things that I love that inspired me and made me want to read books and listen to music. And it was never like for me, I had a joie de vivre about something that was outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And to this day, we celebrate that on this show. And I was thinking it just hearing Shatner come to this realization like, because we get so caught up in our own stuff all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all need to address our mental health and things like that. But one of the great things about being alive today is this world that we live in, the people that we know. We prove it on YouTube every day with the communities that we build. There's stuff that's outside of us. And, and the enjoyment of those things is, is what life, life can really be all about. And I, I, I think that, especially nowadays, Everybody's so, you know, up there navel gazing and worried about, well, this is me and blah, blah, blah. And I need this and I need that. But you have to stop and think, you know, we're in a narcissistic world right now. Uh, we really are. And and watching Shatner, like, feel the profundity of of having at least a moment where he realizes that there's so much out there and there's so much awe and wonder to be had. Not just you don't have to look down from space to understand that, but. Our world is full of unbelievable people and places and things, and we can go experience them. And 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 yet we're so, like you said, we're so narcissistic and so navel-gazing that it was great to hear Shatner. And by the way, he can be narcissistic and navel-gazing too. We but to hear, him, to hear him say, my God, uh, it was a profound moment. And, and I know there's all this cynicism. Well, it's oh billionaires my. competing with... But you know what? It doesn't matter. So, we forget. So yeah, we they're pushing the boundaries. Yeah. As anybody did from human history. Look, we certainly uh, the Twitterati and the people that are complaining about somebody's comedy special or whatever the hell, they're not going to be going to space anytime soon because everyone's so far up their own asses. And no, worried they about might be going offended. to the loony bin, but OK, I'm telling you. Um, and it's 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 nice to see somebody profoundly expect uh, affected by an outside experience again yeah i i got i got no problem with uh billionaires pushing pushing the boundaries of space if no one else is gonna do it uh in the western sphere then uh let these guys do it let elon do it let jeff do it uh they got the resources to do it you know um so, yeah, so because our cares? governments can't what, get what, it together we well can't i mean the, 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 the thing is though if, if you um you, if you say to these people who are complaining, well, what, what do you expect them to do with their money? And they'd be like, <laughs> sort me out. No, 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 no. You sort yourself out. You sort yourself out. Uh, hand out society. Um, no, I, I, it was it was such a, a great, uh, great day, great moment. Um Wow, it, it's it feels it legitimately to me anyway. It legitimately feels special. Uh, it, it feels like part of uh, part of culture has uh, has touched the stars today, and um, I can just imagine how absolutely livid George Takai is, and that really makes me happy. Um, how about the he, cast of Discovery? <laughs> You know that Elon Musk is going to try and well, I'm going to take the whole cast up. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, he'll probably dump them in all fairness, knowing Elon. And they'll find an anomaly. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's an Sorry? anomaly. I, the anomaly. What is it? It's it's an anomaly. That's why I called it an anomaly. You guys, you but people what are very is good it? at your dreams. <laughs> it's just, I, I said that I tweeted yesterday. I said every time they say anomaly in the fourth season trailer for Discovery, <laughs> that one of the Horta's <laughs> children are going to die. Wait, so every and... time they say anomaly and somebody says, what is it? <laughs> There's anomaly off the starboard bow. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I <God>. don't know. <laughs> oh, Star Trek, what have you become? What have you become? Um, I would love them to take the cast of Discovery up into space and leave them. Uh, and just leave them there. Let them just float away into uh, into the void, never to be seen uh, again. Um, 
but, but or or after, of course, Doctor Gay. Uh, it's the only no. It's the only name I know him as because it's the only purpose he serves in the show. Um, of course, decided to defend the uh, the the that with trans activists from Netflix, saying that Dave Dave Chappelle's comedy special committed literal violence. Yeah, these people. And when I say these people, I mean Hollywood elitists. They live in a different planet. They, well, they say, live on a completely different planet to regular, normal, sane uh, human beings. But Ted Sarandos, one of the one of the Hollywood elites, he did put Dave Chappelle's special on Netflix. You know, he and did, and he him. defended it, and he defended yep. it as well. Good on and, him. And I, what I was disappointed by is that the nuance and what Dave Chappelle's message really was has been, I think, overlooked. You know, I, I thought think he, his specials have been great. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, he's very thought provoking. Very, very much thought provoking. So. Very much so. Um, the idea is you're supposed to think about what, uh, what, what, what he's talking about. I, I, the superficiality. What I don't like is, is nowadays people stop at what they don't like and get stuck on that, and they, they, they don't go any further about and that's the same thing you know i was talking about it i felt the need to go on online yesterday and talk about shatner's vision and i read an article from the new york times and it was all about billionaires competing with one another and the as if as if like you know 30 years ago amazon didn't exist mm -hmm. and jeff bezos was the valedictorian of his high school class you know and and here's somebody who used his education moved forward through life and created something that literally changed the world as did elon musk whether it was paypal or whatever yeah and and these are these are exceptional people they're not the norm but now we hate them for it now because they have these visions of the future that have have altered human existence and and uh we hate them for it and well, what, would, what would we have them do? <laughs> I mean, at least how many people, you know, people can be cynical and well, what about the working conditions in Amazon warehouses? That's a very legitimate concern. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think people, look, IATSE probably will go on strike. Hollywood will go on strike for the people that actually make movies for for fair working conditions. And I I'm a, fully support that. Um, but at the end of the day, who is going to push forward the technologies that we need to better our lives? Space technology the byproducts of this technology seeps into every other industry, metallurgy, uh, fuels, clean burning fuels, all the, 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 the communications technology, uh, the amount of people that going to space employs across many different disciplines. And the idea that maybe people will start to get more interested in STEM and uh, STEM education. And we, we are going to build, we are going to build a future where a lot of people having or they're going to go into education and they're going to learn things that they weren't wouldn't normally learn if they weren't inspired by these launches <laughs> you know so i just had a very cynical thought when he said they're going to learn things which they wouldn't normally learn and i thought yeah that's because they're changing education to their own means nowadays that uh what used to be right is now wrong and what's wrong is now right yeah well i mean we got to get back to real science and stop <laughs> yes stop we have denying, to get back to yeah you know denying that things certainly don't exist and and the idea that one is not you can have both things you know you can have a more just civilization but not by being stupid and crazy either so no uh of course there was that great interview with the uh the owner of uh, Ben and Jerry's, wasn't it, uh, the other day? Yep. Uh, when they were talking about, you know, their wokeness, basically, and then they got challenged, and they were just like, so why'd you sell ice cream in Texas if you don't believe in their uh, abortion laws? And they were like, uh, why don't you sell, why do you sell your ice cream here when you don't believe this? Why do you sell your ice cream here when you don't believe that? And the simple fact of the matter is, it's very easy to dismiss other countries when you're selling a product, because that's uh, faff to sell in in the first place but to actually uh go against your bread and butter in sales which is uh of course your domestic audience uh then suddenly it's just like well yeah but if we pulled out of texas that's a lot of money and if we pulled out of and then he got caught and he was just like it's a really good question actually well yeah i mean that's <laughs> that's 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 what we and and we need to ask ourselves more of this and and we have to ask uh, of the people 
these questions. I mean, there's, these are tough questions to answer. And where do you, where do you put your ideals above the actual principles of making money and, and earning your bread and butter? A guy like Chappelle, as he put it in a special, he walked away from $50 million. $50 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that pretty much sums it all up. Well, I want to kind of bring this back onto to the track of the show. I want uh, Blue Origin to release uh, a William Shatner toy. Dude, I, I want a William Shatner uh, Blue Origin action figure, 12 inch. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in his space suit and, and, and with a sound a chip, a sound chip that actually has his speech when he was talking to Bezos in it. So it'll be repeated over and over again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, that would be that'd be awesome if they did something like that. Uh, but it was just wonderful to see everybody being like all the crew, uh, all the people who are on the ground. Everyone was just so ecstatic about how things went and the situation and what they're doing and uh it was very infectious indeed and, and in, a, in a great way uh and made me think to myself wow look what happens when we actually endeavor to work together uh for the betterment of humankind as opposed for the betterment of the individual uh and i don't mean that in a fucking commie way i mean that in a this is what humanity has been doing since the beginning of time uh way uh this you know columbus day a couple of days ago and people whinging and moaning and he's just thinking i'm just thinking to myself uh, if people didn't colonize the world we wouldn't have the technologies the advancements uh that we have today uh to to try and look at the past in in current day eyes is the most insane thing that you can ever do um, because you are living it, you would be living in a different time. And if you want to go back, if we could go back to those days and you could go back to those days with your 2021 sensibilities, no. you, you, you'd be dead in <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You'd that, be strung up in some in that alleyway or somewhere in seconds, mate. And how, how far back, how far back do you want to go? Uh, what group hasn't been persecuted? I mean, yeah. you know, and, and what group, and it's interesting. We only go back so far. I mean, how it, it's almost like, you know, e even in indigenous tribes were never like the kumbaya singing peaceful people that you made them no. out to be. No, absolutely. I mean, they were warring tribes, warring factions. A lot of the slaves in Africa were sold by other warlords to the white slavers uh, who took them away. This wasn't just like raiding parties. That was, you know, some no. uh, slavery has been uh, a part of human culture, still exists today. And it doesn't discriminate against gender, age, sex, sexuality, color, uh, religion, or anything. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a we have a very uh, even sanitized view on history nowadays. That's so uh, weird. Just to fit to fit specific narratives. So yeah, to see them all just so happy and 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 uh, you know, you you definitely felt there was this legitimate camaraderie with what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve and i was so impressed with how that ship worked and behaved uh when you when all i've ever seen is space shuttles and uh and stuff like that to suddenly see this this autonomous ship which splits but then returns back of its Dude. own accord and uh, and by the way, this craziness. was the fourth. This was the fourth time that ship was used. Yes, fourth, the booster fourth rocket. Outing. Yeah, fourth outing. And another thing, you know, when I was thinking about what happened to me in school, when people like things, when you, it doesn't matter what kind of a person you are. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are. If you are working side by side with other people for a common goal, and you're all working together. There's no better way for people to get to know each other and respect each other than through working together to achieve something collectively. Mm. And I'm and I'm not talking about collectivism in the Marxist sense. No, 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 no. I'm talking about trying to achieve <laughs> collaboration, excellence. collaboration to do something that no one has ever done to be excellent, mm. you know, to be the first to. And, and and that's what, you know, Blue Origin is not just Jeff Bezos sitting home tinkering with his rockets he's employing hundreds and hundreds of people to push the boundaries of technology the of same technology, way that yeah. 
Elon Musk has been, the same way that Richard <clears throat> Branson has been doing this for almost 20 years. And you can be cynical about it, but they're creating new technologies that are going to trickle down throughout all of our civilizations everywhere we look. And well, just um, look what he's, what he's they've achieved already. It's it's yep. crazy. Uh and to have two flights so close together as well. Um oh. just, just shows that the turnaround is is you know, if you wanted NASA space flights, you were looking years apart. Oh yeah. Between the, yeah, we've had two this year from Blue, you know, from uh, Blue Origin. It's just like and what? and and let's not forget Elon Musk sent four people and Elon Musk, in, yeah, in orbit he, yeah. around the work for, or, or world for three days. Yeah. And um it's 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 pretty interesting. And so um I, I think that seeing these kinds of things happen. I mean, we're living in an exciting time. We're seeing the dawn of a new age of exploration. And it might take a while, but oh my you know, god, colonizers in space. <laughs> as long as we can take our hot toys with us. <laughs> but I hear I did, I mean, I, I joke, but I actually did hear that from somebody going, Oh great, let's just go colonize space. And I'm just like <laughs> And the it's just like, where do you think we came from? You're, you're living in a society that is We're the result stardust. of thousands of years of we've been colonizing the planet since we left the trees. <laughs> it's just, you know. But we're all stardust. From stardust we came, from stardust we will go. Yes, and all we that. Will. Uh, but what a beautiful day. What a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, for Bill Shatner. Captain Kirk has legitimately been to space. He has he has traversed the final frontier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess you could say dimensional travel would be the next. I mean, I think there's more frontiers. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? What the millennia will bring for mankind and maybe other kinds going forward. All I know is that if I was a, an intelligent species that was traversing the Milky Way galaxy and I came across the planet Earth, I go, fuck these weirdos. <laughs> they might have already done that. I think they have. I think, I, I, I think uh, planet Earth is big brother. Uh, uni is is universe is the universe's big brother show. Just like look yeah. at the crazy apes, look at these crazy apes, just be mental. They're mad. And then I had another idea that maybe, maybe the hydron collider we'd, we'd gone through into a parallel universe, <laughs> and and the the hydron collider sent us into a parallel universe where everyone's a woke wanker. Uh, and uh, normality has been postponed. Postpo hey, speaking of non-woke mm. and tenuously touching on the uh, the genre of toys and games, uh, have you seen any Squid Game? Dude, I just started watching Squid Game, and oh my, how much oh fun my. is that show? Uh, you know... Uh, uh, you know, I have to say, though, I kind of want to franchise it and play that for real. Not me. I'll be one of the overlords. You know, why don't we... Oh, just put a bunch of Twitter uh, tw Twitter <laughs> fucking blue check marks in there. <laughs> Excuse uh, me? No, it's it's quite extraordinary. And to see what I think is really uh, heartening about its success and the fact that it's become such a phenomenon is, you know, it's a Korean show. And as you watch, mm -hmm. as you watch the say are the american comic book industry being taken apart by manga because they still care about characters and stories and <laughs> and and um what i love about seeing squid game is <laughs> if you tried to pitch that in america people have been like what and yet we're getting netflix for again for everybody that wants to complain between ted sarandos defending dave chappelle he's also getting us german shows like dark which is incredible mm -hmm. He's getting, uh, there's like been great Korean shows. I love their period zombie series, Kingdom. Squid Game is the latest in um, a foreign series. I gotta series. watch Kingdom. There's a Danish series called The Chestnut Man that is definitely worth watching. And for anybody that wants to bitch and moan and complain about um, Netflix, they are bringing the world together through our 
media. And again, you can be cynical about it as you want, but Americans are watching foreign programming when 65% of Americans don't have passports. So, you know, it's pretty neat to see. And I mean, it's a genre show. It, it combines everything from the running man to the hunger games, to battle Royale, to social, to the, <laughs> to the prisoner and social commentary. There's a, there's a great Australian uh, exploitation movie called Turkey shoot that people mm -hmm. will recognize, or in America, it was called escape 2000. Um, there's a, there's a lot of really great stuff that is challenging, um, challenging to, to modern audiences. And that's what great entertainment is all about. Well, I, yeah, I, I, 100% hear you. I thought one of the beauties of um, Squid Game is uh, Squid Game absolutely has some social messaging. Oh, yeah. But this is the beauty. Social messaging and social justice are completely different things. Yes. Social messaging is taking facets of our current society and casting a light on it, shining a light on it, and, and saying, look, you know, we have a society that does this. Is it right or wrong? It doesn't give you the answer. It, it, it uh, objectively opens it up for you to debate, uh, for you to bring your own interpretations to it. Um, uh, and and the uh, you know you could say the underlining theme of of uh, Squid Game is is uh, poverty is poverty sure. and absolutely income uh, inequality whatever yeah you want e income equality poverty and and where where do you draw the line you know where do you draw the line between that and uh, the the excellent what I found to be so good was every character's got flaws yeah oh, every yeah. single one from from the richest to the poorest. Um, and the uh, I'm trying, yeah, we try. I'm trying to do this, folks, in a non-spoilery uh, way. Sure. Uh, but Robert's only seen the first two episodes anyway, uh, and I finished this. I literally binged it yesterday and finished it today. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so to have these like social themes, and uh, to have it done in, in a very interesting way, yeah. There's elements of other shows. There's element. There's elements of other uh, franchises in there. But one of the beauties of it is is taking elements and creating something new and dynamic. Uh, by that, you know, the uh, manga has uh, genres. It has genres within manga, uh, and it's not like ripping off. It's just saying, hey, there's a. This is the genre for this. There's a genre for that. There's a genre for this. So if your interest is in this, 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 and this, hey, you know, you've got stuff, not just a thing, you have stuff to go through. Uh, and so one of the the um, great elements of the first episode was how well it was set up. Yep. It didn't rush. It didn't rush itself at all. It, it uh, made you get a very good idea of the uh, principal character. Uh, it made you get a very good idea about their morality it made you get a very good idea about their pros and their cons their flaws and their strengths and their weaknesses um and then uh of course it opens up their vulnerabilities uh and and uh once the the uh the uh call had been answered shall we say <laughs> that took the that took uh these group of people to this um game event uh the the excellent the wonderful nature of it is just how complicit everybody was everybody was just how complicit and the only without spoiling anything the only factor which uh, made people rethink their de uh, their decision was the consequence of not winning a game. Right. That was the otherwise they would have been fine, no problem. Uh, and we already saw within the first game other people's morality. We already saw in the first game uh, other people's uh, fears and uh, strengths. And, uh, oh my goodness me, I, I saw a tweet from you today where you said, I can't believe that 
uh, I'd be waking up and having Bill Shatner made me making me cry today. Yep. Uh, a tweet like that, I found I found that to be very sweet. Well, I can fully confess that I did not expect to wake up today and find myself bawling tears at episode six of Squid Game. Uh. <laughs> I had tears pouring down my face, and it broke me. Now in episode I don't. Six. People have talked to me about. They're like, "Wait, do you get to episode six? I don't know what happens. Mm -hmm. Please don't say anything. No, no, I'm not going to say a thing. <laughs> not going to say a thing. Uh, but, uh, but I think, yeah, I think there's already this. Uh, it's already going around that episode six of Squid Game is something special. Yeah, and and uh, I'd already heard that myself, and I, I got to say. Oh, it's Adam Krigler here. Hi, Adam. How you doing, dude? Good to see you, man. Um, one thing that I would say is when episode six started, I thought this is all kind of normal, you know. Well, you know, normal for what's been going on, and and I don't see anything unto ah! <laughs> ah! And uh, when it happens, it happens, and it's and it's not one certain thing. It's uh, episode six is one of the best, I think, best written character studies of humanity that there has there has been in a long time, and uh, it didn't it doesn't do what an American like Discovery's trailer was trash. Ah oh, look, oh, look, there's another anomaly that's going to consume the universe. Oh my Dude. god everything's at stake again oh my god i got tears in my eyes because i love such uses muses none of this fake bullshit you know none of this fake ott emotion or anything like that the it was the writing of episode six which makes it so strong that when you finish it i was like i was just like well uh, it, it uh. goes back it goes back to what i always say a story must be about great characters and the great story itself. The problem is if you, I always say, don't put your universe and don't put your agenda for your yeah, characters yeah, yeah. and story. And Star Trek now, modern Star Trek is doing both of those things, as is much of modern American pop culture. I feel that, you know, I've joked that the Star Trek hostage crisis has continued since 2009. <laughs> and and we've been getting substandard characterization and terrible storytelling. And this idea yes. that everything, this these universe-destroying anomalies, those stories were anomalous in Star Trek itself. You know, there was a lot of times when a Star Trek story would would be very personal in nature oh absolutely and, yeah and we're we we we've lost all that when I, I it does not i'll tell you something else i've been reading the the final the star trek novel series they're going to wrap up the star trek novel series because it's no longer in line with they've had a continuity for 20 years that no longer fits with star trek picard mm. so that's another thing star trek picard and modern trek is now ruined the star trek novel series so they have to end that continuity but the Star Trek novel series is dealing with a universe destroying cataclysm that is far more creative and far more interesting and far more Star Trekian than I assure you anything that they've done on the last three seasons of Discovery. And it's incredibly frustrating to read these books when you realize the authors of these novels, and I could have said this for the last 20 years, have a far greater grasp of what Star Trek is than the people that have been paid to write the swill that is Star Trek Discovery and Picard. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I one of the greatest universal problems I think with TNG, of course, was all good things. It was it was a brilliant, brilliant series finale to the show, uh, which encompassed three timelines of enterprise with with kirk's tenure uh all working together or, or trying to work together because of course picard's jumping between picards uh in an effort to to resolve the destruction of the the universe because this anomaly what is it uh, it's an anomaly yes but what is it 
fucking fire yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's so that was that's the way that you do it. But every start was it Discovery season two. Uh, we got to do the, the the angels got to save everyone's got to save the universe from the, the Discovery season three. The retarded fucking kid who cried because he lost his mum destroyed the universe because of the Discovery season four. We got another threat to the universe that is on that. We're coming every fucking week. Right. <laughs> it's just. How's about, how's about, right? How's about you do a couple of episodes where we actually get to know the names of the fucking crew? <laughs> well, what's what's really interesting is is they've gone exactly in the opposite direction that Michael Pillar did when he came on board the third season of TNG. He said, you know what? We've The first two seasons where we're always dealing with something out there, that's problematic. Let's begin all of our stories with one of our characters. And, and that's how we'll get into the story from them. And that's what made Next Generation the classic TV show that it was. The first two seasons were hit and miss. But then when Pillar came on board and they really solidified the writing staff with Ron Moore, mm -hmm. um, Renee Echevarria, even Brandon coming on board, and Nurin Shankar, and Jerry Taylor, and, and, um, and Michael Pillar, they were able to give us the Star Trek that we loved that was more along the lines of what went on in, on TOS. And, and they did the same thing with, with um, Deep Space Nine. That was a great synthesis of you had this overarching story, but all the stories were about our characters first and foremost. And knowing that these are all about this anomalous, whatever, the giant gravity well of hell that is destroying the universe shows a fundamental lack of understanding of what science fiction itself as a genre is. Well, and Star Trek is first and foremost <laughs> about character. But but that's because they were too busy making sure that you were fully aware in their trailer, no white men allowed. Oh my God. In the future, no white men. No, no, no. David Cronenberg is the only white man in the future. Yes, yeah, yeah. And he's only trying to set up a TV show that's never going to happen, probably. No, but it's 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 it is really. I have to say, you know, one of the people I I always like to listen to him opine about Star Trek is Dave Cullen. I don't know if you yes. watch his YouTube channel now. You know, he got he, I, during the pandemic. He did things that I didn't really follow, just so you know. But he did a fantastic video that I watched this morning, um, right after Shatner went to space, about the Discovery season four trailer mm. that was so spot on. I mean, he nailed it. So, yeah, yeah, I like, I like, I like David. I like uh, David Cullen. Well, I've, I've, I haven't watched a huge amount. I've watched, but uh, when I found him, I started to like watch his Doctor Who stuff and uh, take his Star Trek you know, stuff is great. Yeah, great. some some of his Discovery uh, stuff as well. But, uh, but you know, this is something that we've been saying, you know, for a while now <laughs> yeah. about Discovery. It's, this is. This is one of the most specific shows to be, you know, we are purposely excluding, purposefully excluding. Uh, and who who knows uh, whether or not, of course, um, what's my jiggy's uh, white male is not gay as well. So there you go. Remember, in the future, it's baseline by. According to the according to one of the right, yeah, yeah. There we go. Love for everyone. Uh, hey, have you got any toys? Well, you know, I don't know. Did I have this out? I mean, I, 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 I keep showing this. I keep showing it, but I can't get enough, dude. I just can't get enough. Oi! Um, you know, I was showing this last night. This is, it's my figure of the year so far. I don't want to spend yeah. it. Uh, this is the deluxe Spider-Man. I finally, well, I, I can't, I have to be able to lower it. Um, the deluxe Hot Toys quarter scale Spider-Man figure. I I don't want to pose it because I worry about, I pose it like I didn't want to push the joints too far. But this figure, and you can, you can, you can put the Vulture display base together in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love this figure so much. I mean, I keep playing with it. I keep, I keep, I got my Maja cases and I, I was going to put them away, but I can't, I keep, 
I keep touching him, and I just love this figure. This figure is so good. Well, the, the, the good news for me, from my perspective, is uh, I'm well on the ways now to sorting out downstairs. Ooh. Because I've been spending, uh, been a bit off for a few days, and I've been spending my time just chipping away. Yeah, yeah. Doing How's a that going? Bit. So it's, I've chipped away quite nicely. So we are we are on the verge of uh, some stuff's got to come out of the bedroom and got to go downstairs and out. And then we are now, once that's done, and that shouldn't be a, that big a job, such wood. Yeah. Then it's the then it starts then the stuff starts moving from here yeah i should have i i in this week with now that i've got my maja cases i have actually nine you know that i've got and they're also in where my physical media is so i'm going to finally have this place squared away where i'll be able to move around the rob observatory and have all the lights up that i've purchased and all that so i'm really excited well yeah because once that's gone there's a i got like a a shelving thing there which is rickety as fucking that's gonna go i've already bought a new one it's downstairs so then i get then i can get that built up uh, i'm gonna decide what's gonna happen with the comics because the comics might actually go out and go into the bedroom if there's room and then that will become the modu case area hmm <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so stuff is uh, on the verge. So my Spidey will be coming out soon. My one in four because I have one of those. Uh, but I did get some good news from just, just, just uh, this week, uh, where he sent me an invoice. Good news! It starts off with an invoice uh, for the shipping. Oh, that means you're going to get your. What are you getting? for my uh for, uh vulture one in six wow vulture. okay i do need to buy a mansion you do so i can Kans, come stay Kansas with you has Have a guest million, room. please uh so yeah so by the way the people are commenting on you're wearing the same shit the last couple of days yeah this is my tidying up downstairs shit <laughs> that i'm wearing that's this this is why it's still the same because i'm using these clothes while i'm getting uh tight while i'm sorting out downstairs um so yeah we're i'm well on the well on the ways to that a little bit of uh, work to do downstairs tomorrow but i got nothing committed tomorrow which is good uh so if i can do a nice little chunk of that uh yeah, and like I said, then it literally means stuff's going to be some stuff's going to be coming out of that. Uh, then I need to sort the bathroom a bit. Once the bathroom's sorted, uh, then I can move. Yeah, but I don't want to move the the plastic boxes upstairs to the attic <laughs> until the until I know what's going to be fitting inside the modular cases and how many much space I'll have left. And oh, I know what I'll have to play with as regards to that. But what it will mean when that's done is these statues will all be going. These these here will all be going, and this area will be getting cleaned out for whatever. Now, I did receive um, a delivery today, which, uh, not today, it was last week, uh, which uh, I haven't been able to, to drag up yet because uh, things have to get uh, sorted first. You'll understand when I tell you what it is in a moment. But my... 1992 Batman Returns Batmobile has has arrived. So I now have the Justice Mobile, still boxed, of course, obviously, and the uh, 89 slash uh, 1992 uh, Batman Returns Batmobile uh, downstairs. So I have two Batmobiles ready. I have the 66 on order. I have the 95 on order. I have the Tumblr already paid for. So that's going to be five bad mobiles. Mm. Sitting on a. I need a bigger place. Yep. Me too. But I got a couple of toys. I got a couple of toys. Let me show this one off first, because 
I do have a Transformer contingent here, and I do love me trannies. Oh, yeah. Tranny, tranny formers. If anyone starts getting funny. Uh, and look what arrived! Ooh. It's Rodimus Prime. Uh, from the uh, Transformers Kingdom War on Cybertron series. So I've had my Rodimus Prime. Look at that. Oh, and... yeah. you got to go full screen on that, buddy. Okay. I want to see it. Oh, baby. Now you're, right. now you're asking the questions. There you go. Look at it. Look at, that's the Rodimus Prime. Wow, dude. So this All actually, right. if I turn it over so you can see, there's the figure itself. And yes, the figure does come, kind of does the hot rod attachment. So you can do hot rod. Uh, and then you can actually connect it to the trailer wow. and then do the Rodimus Prime trailer. And the attachment on the trailer pretty much looks like it did on the uh, G1 uh, Rodimus Prime. Uh, but look at that bad boy. Look at that. That is That's, beautiful, man. That is beautiful. Got the Matrix with it as well. So, yeah, very happy. It's not a rapey camper van, no. <laughs> it's not a rapey camper van. But that is that is awesome and well chuffed. A rapey camper van. A rapey van. camper van. And then I got a I got a one in six figure. What'd you get? It's not a hot toy. By the way, here's the Star Trek book I was talking about. Oh, hold on. It's got it. great, great. Oh, yeah, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't out in the UK yet. Coda, is it? Yep. Yeah, it's not out in the UK. It wasn't out in the UK when you um try to uh, try to flog it to my last. Uh, so it's a one in six, but it's not a hot toy. Mm. But it's not a third party. Oh, so it's legit. So it's legit. Legit. Yeah. Oh, is that that's is that the Return of it the Jedi? Is the Return of the Jedi Darth Vader that I've had on pre-order for the whole of time itself. This is the sideshow. Uh Vader from Return of the Jedi. Very, very nice. And uh, this is a big boy. Yep. I wanted this Vader because I got the um the, the sideshow Luke Skywalker. Right. Yep. So I, I wanted to get the um the matching Vader if you get my drift. Yes, yes, sir. Uh so if I were just to take some of this. He is he huge, I think is the uh, the term. Ah, oh, the cape is beautiful. The cape. Ladies. The cape. Oh, I want to sniff you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. I just want to sniff you. Oh, my. Oh, my God. I might actually get high on this. Oh, this is oh god, you smell so good. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me, just leave me in Vader for a bit. Uh, <laughs> but here's the the one in six uh Jedi return of the Jedi Vader. Uh just look how beautiful that cape just drapes down. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Drops. I mean, I'm gonna have to have, have him out to get rid of you know the cresses, but um just the way that that drops. Uh, now he's got his, his uber big nappy on. Yeah. Uber nappy. Uh, I need to... Uh, if I flip the cape up, that's where the batteries go. Sure. Uh, on the back there. So that's where the batteries go, which will light up his uh, console. And uh, then, of course, you have the, you know, the Jedi outfit, which comes down very very nice yeah and we have of course the black with the gray mm. and then the gunmetal gray and the black uh this is a, a bit of a butte 
This is Darth piece, yeah, but this is just a chunk of a a figure. Now, if I was like, um, hold on, let's grab yo. So let's just grab. <laughs> That's the height difference. <laughs> That's the height difference. I love it. That is huge. That is a big Darth Vader chunk, boy. There you go. Oh, God. Oh, I want to smell you all over. <laughs> Sounds like a pop song. I know. Yeah. I want to smell you all over, baby. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is. Uh, so I'm really glad I got this one. It was it was kind of frustrating because I did really really like um, not just the look, but also the basing for the 40th Empire Strikes Back Vader, because uh, of course it was on the um, the gantry where he fights uh, Luke. That's that was, that oh, was yeah. the base. So the basing was great, but I needed I needed to have the right Vader for. For the Lukey Lukey. Yeah, of course. And uh, I think this is uh, absolutely beautiful. I really do. And it's huge. Huge! Go on, Vader. We're going to have to put you back in your, uh, your little home for a bit. Get back into your little home, mate. I don't want to go back. You're going to have to go back in. I am so, I'm once not sleepy. Why are you going to have to get it back in? So yeah, a couple of a couple of things. My um, rescue uh, is shipping is is being prepped for shipping. So, oh, did you just see what happened there? I pressed a thing and it made a thing happen. <laughs> um, so my rescue is prepped for shipping. So I should get a uh, joy uh, an invoice uh, for. Um, Oh, I got a story as well. Little story for um, fees, of course, import fees. So anyway, I don't know if I told you. I think I might have told you, but uh, the other the other week, a couple of weeks ago, I got a letter from from a courier company saying, uh, "Please pay us this invoice of so and so and so for import fees." And uh, I always get uh, an emailed invoice, which I pay immediately, and they don't sure. deliver if you don't pay it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I also have it uh, in triplicate because I have it texted to me and I have it WhatsApp to me as well. Mm. So Smart. I have it in tri triplicate to make sure that, you know, that I've got plenty of proof. <laughs> yes. And uh, so anyway, I phone up and I, and I get through to uh, a call center in a, another portion of the planet. Uh, and I say, hey, look, I've got this letter saying pay this import fee. I don't owe any import fees. Uh, this doesn't correspond to any invoices that I've had and any invoices that I've had emailed to me. I pay immediately. Otherwise, you don't deliver. Um. So what's going on here? What is this? What does this respond correspond to? So she just says, um, "Oh, I'll just, I'll just uh, whip you up an invoice then." And I go, "I went, no, no, no. You can't send me a, 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 a letter saying you owe us these import fees for this delivery, which you're claiming you delivered and never got the import fees on. And when I say show me the invoice." You're going, oh, we're just going to create a fresh invoice. No, wow. that doesn't say anything. That's you creating an invoice to pay for this letter. So anyway, she uh, she hangs up on me. Really? Yeah, she hangs up on me. Which, uh, let's just say, doesn't go to, down too well with myself. Well, I would also say that's suspicious. Very suspicious. So I, I call um, them back up. And I get through to somebody else and I said, look, I've been calling, I called somebody about this invoice and now I'm not, now I've gone past being right. present. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got this stupid invoice in the post, uh, spoke to one of your colleagues, they couldn't put it to, towards anything that 
uh, was sent to me. And then when I would challenge them on that, they just hung up. Uh, so oh, I'm very sorry, very sorry about this. So again, this person was going around in, in circles with me. Again, say, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just raise you an invoice for this. And I'm like, stop trying to raise an invoice for a letter that you've sent when there's no goods behind it. Right, right. And if All you've you're already doing had, is, yeah. <laughs> are they telling you, so let me understand this. So yeah. they're telling you, you owe them for something that's already been sent that you've already received. Yes. And you so keep the, the, all yes. your import fees. So what basically yes. they're, it's probably they 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 owe the import fees. They somehow didn't pay them, and they're trying to get you to f their cock up. You have well, to fix I it. said, show me the invoice. Show me the invoice this corresponds to, and I will pay now, right now. But show me the invoice, and they. They couldn't find. They couldn't because there was no invoice. Right, and so, so why this you person? Expect so this person's going just going around in circles, going, "Well, what do you want me to raise it? Stop trying to raise an invoice." I was like, "Look, I got to the point. It's just like, look, you you can't help me. You can't help me. You're you're useless." I said, "I need to speak to one. Of, I need to speak to your manager." And and I, did, I had to do a Karen, but I had to do a Karen because I couldn't get. There was nothing I could do to get through to these people. Just going around in circles. So uh, she said, um, well, we, we can't speak to one at the moment. I'll have to get them to call you back. So I was like, right, when are they going to call me back? They'll call you back within the hour. They better do. If they don't, I'll be back on the phone. So anyway, did they call me back within the hour? No. Did they call me back the next day? No. <laughs> day after that, phone call. Is that... Mr. As. Yes, it is Mr. As. Oh, Mr. Uh, hi, As. I, Mr. As. Mr. That's As. never a good sign. No. Uh, I, I'm calling, I'm so and so from, you know, from Courier Company. I'm saving their blushes here as well, aren't I? I'm so and so from Courier Company, known, well known Courier Company. Uh, and I believe that you have uh, an issue with an invoice uh not paying an invoice or so she said something like that which again just drove me wild it's like no i said i have a letter asking me to pay a hundred pounds for import fees against an invoice that none of you can produce because it doesn't exist i said if you can produce the invoice show me where you emailed it to me show me where you text it to me because when I get an import fee order from you, you email me, you at, you Apple me, and you WhatsApp me. So I get triplicate of it. So I know. So I said, you show me that and I will pay it. But nobody is showing me an invoice. They're just saying, pay us 100 quid. So anyway, this woman gets it. And she's like, wait a minute. So are you saying that we've sent you a letter saying you owe us money for an import. However, we have not invoiced you at any stage for this letter that we are. Yes. And she's like, gotcha. She said, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to have to call you back. It probably will be in a couple of days, but can I call you back in a couple of days? No problem. She's never called me back. And I think they might have wiped it off the system, let's just say. But, well, yeah, but, I mean... But, I, I, but it's hmm. not over yet. Oh. It's not over yet. So I get a phone call a few days later. Hi, it's so-and-so so -and -so from DH... <laughs> I gave it away, it? From known courier company. <laughs> so I'm sort of... So I'm like, okay, this is this woman going to say, right, we've, you know, we've sorted it, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. Hello, uh, this is a courtesy call to say that we're going to be invoicing you for an invoice which is incoming, which was for, let's just say, this. Okay? Uh, it's going to be X amount of... <laughs> it's going to be X amount of money. And I, and, uh, and, and I was just like, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Invoice me. Just invoice me and I'll pay it like I always do. I don't need a courtesy call from you to say this, okay? 
Uh, okay. Fucking hell, douche. Two hours later, the phone rings again. Same fucking number. And I'm just like, oh, you now you're taking a bit. Pick up the phone. Hello. Hello, is that Mr. Az? Yes, it is. This is a courtesy call. Fuck my life. From from unknown, unknown from known courier company to say that uh, you have a delivery incoming and it's going to accrue an import fee of 53 pounds or whatever it was. Uh, and we will be invoicing you for that. Why are you calling me with a courtesy call? Just email me like you normally do and text me and I'll pay it. Stop fucking courtesy calling me about this. So, oh, sorry. Do, do, do. Okay. So, and I did say fucking, by the way. I, as I was losing my temper. Anyway, the next day. Now, let's just say we're now in a, we're, in, we're deep in a period where I wasn't <laughs> in having a particularly good time over the last couple of weeks. Phone rings, same fucking number. And I'm just like, not today. Not fucking today. Pick up the phone. Hello. This is known courier company. This is a courtesy call to let you know that you have. And I went, stop. Stop. Why the fuck are you fucking calling me three fucking times in two fucking days? about a courtesy call when you just fucking email me an invoice. Email me, email me the fucking invoice and I'll pay it. And if you ever phone me up a fucking again, I'm going to tell you to fuck off. You got it? I'm sorry? Now piss off! <laughs> and that is pretty much verbatim how the conversation went and in the manner that it went. <laughs> I have not received a courtesy call since then. Did you get an invoice? I got an invoice in the email. Well, yeah, because it was this, this boy. <sighs> oh boy! I was, I was, I got a feeling right that they were just like, right, we fucked up with this guy because we tried to, we tried to nick a hundred quid off him for an invoice which didn't exist. Let's just be nice and give him a courtesy call and say, hey, we're going to be emailing you in the next couple of days. About no. No, no, no. Go fuck you. Go fuck. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Send me an email and I'll fucking pay it. Call me up and I'm going to tell you to fuck off to your face. Literal <laughs> words. Oh. Jesus Christ. There's customer service and there's retardation. And even when, like, the second one, I was just like, why, why are you calling me? Why? Why am I getting these courtesy calls? Why? Never had them before. Never wanted them. I just get emailed. Just fucking email me and I'll pay it. Well, this is just a courtesy call. I don't want any fucking courtesy call. <laughs> How is it a courtesy to call someone and say, hey, do you know what? We're going to fucking charge you money in the next couple of days. <laughs> Have a nice fucking day. <laughs> How is that a courtesy call? <laughs> That's a fucking piss take call. Hi, we're just calling up saying we're going to take some money off you soon. Bye, Zs. <laughs> Fuck me. <sighs> God bless you, good sir. <laughs> just, just, just send me an invoice. So you have to do. Just like you've been doing for the last two and a half fucking years. You don't have to change it up. No one's asking you to reinvent the freaking wheel. Jesus, Lordy McMuffin. So, um, yeah, uh, one can say uh, one was not amused. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, there's my little, uh, there's my little um, God damn it story about... Um, a career company of known origin. <laughs> wow. They got me on the wrong day. Eek. That's what they got me on. Uh, let's go through some super chat, shall we? <laughs> let's go through some supers. Let's, I want you to tell me another story. <laughs> <laughs> Here are 
else if he shouted it on the phone and called his stupid Please tell me another story, sir. Uh, the thing is, though, I got I got to be honest. I, I I did actually taper down how loud I was. Oh, okay. Because it's because it's like nine o'clock and the night. If the neighbors, you know, if it's like during the afternoon, this stream, I probably would have given it full full lungs. But she got full fucking lungs. Um, but the 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 language was pretty much verbatim. There was unknown amounts of fucking and piss off fuck off and piss off and what the fuck and fuckity fuck and i think i did actually pause at one point to say yes i am fucking swearing but there you go uh but you kept me on the other end of the phone when i'm at work and i'm mr nice guy <laughs> and if they're doing that to me i go sir i really do understand the frustration that you're going through right now but, the, but unless we calm down, I can't help you. So, you know, I'm just here. I want to I want to get through this. I want to help you sort this out. So let's work together now. Okay. And I do appreciate. I'm Mr. Defuse when it comes to the other side. But holy fuckerella. Don't fucking courtesy call me. Now then. Uh... Geek, I think for the ten pounds, says brought a tear to my eye seeing how grateful Mr. Shatner was at having the chance to see the final frontier. Then you return to Earth and hear people complaining about pronouns and Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Hashtag to boldly go. Yeah, to By the way, boldly uh, go. Those employees of Netflix have uh, planned a walkout. Uh, from Netflix on the 20th of October. You will not be missed. Welcome to equality, bitches. <laughs> you don't wonder... want it, do you? You don't want it. You don't want it at all. You don't want equality. You want special treatment. Um, Eddie, <laughs> what is it? What is it? Where's Chappelle's great joke was, I don't hate trans people. Have you not been listening? I hate white people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so offended by that as. I, mean, I know. But that I was... wrote a stern letter to Netflix. <laughs> I mean, but that I, what I don't understand is, is like in the sphere of comedy, especially there is a long history of comedians pushing the boundaries of language, pushing the boundaries of, of polite society. And Dave Chappelle's one of the best that there's ever been. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that you got to listen to what he's saying and everything takes everything. Everyone takes it at face value. Look, I wasn't offended when he's saying space Jews. You know, that could have been. And, and he, he brought that joke up. He brought it around and ended it. I mean, the way he sets things up early in his shows yeah, yeah, and brings yeah. them all around. It brings it, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, enough, it, that show was cool. I, 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 I mean, I just, you, 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 he is an equal opportunity offender. <laughs> yes. And, and, and the point is, is we're supposed to look back at ourselves and rather than get mad with what he says, why don't we think about it? You know, I mean, it's, it's why, why are we all, why have we become such sacred cows? Everyone. I mean, come on. Well, man. not not everyone. That's just the point. Not everyone. That's that's just the thing. It, 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 social media has bred this uh, high ego, low self esteem. Uh, it's fed on the weak. It's preyed uh, on the um, malleable, shall I say, in a very nice way. Uh, and uh, it's now we've now just got. Well, there's other stuff I can say which I can't say. I which know. Is stupid. Because I should be able to say it without no problem at all, um, but we we I think we have uh, let's just say sects within sects. Yes, uh, you know there is the legitimate sect of people who I have uh, every uh, sympathy under the sun for, um, with their legit legitimate fight uh, with their identity, uh, and then there's the fake pieces of shit. Well, yeah, I mean that's the on, thing I, on I, Twitter, and um, you can't—they hide behind that label and uh, they use it as a weapon. They weaponize it, and that's why we get this stupidity that's going on. Was it uh, British Airways today announced that they uh, 
They will no longer be saying, ladies and gentlemen, on announcements. They'll be no longer saying, ladies and gentlemen, flight B-40, uh, for fear that it's uh, exclusionary language. I oh, just go, fuck off, please. Just fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck right off. Fuckity bye. That's where we are, clown world. Hi, hi. <laughs> yeah. ah! Eddie from outer space with two euros says, Shatner is my captain. Hashtag where no man has gone before. Where no man of 90 has gone before for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Ladart with a hundred checks says, I was so excited about the space flight today. And none of my friends cared. I need new friends. Anyway, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening to you. Hello there. Uh, superhero displays with a £1.79 says, When I grow up, I want to be William Shatner. <laughs> Me too. Uh, rrm, with a $5 says, Hi, Robin Az. I Hello. want the moves like Shatner. I know. Oh my god. 90. He I mean, he looks great for 90. It's incredible. <laughs> it's it is incredible. My granddad passed away at uh 91 years of age. And uh Shatner is 6 months away from 91, you know. And my god. My you know, my granddad looked like a skeleton. God bless no, I mean, it shows. I mean, Shatner is is a very active guy, mm. you know, and it shows what what staying active can do for you. You know, getting up and moving. I mean, he still plays sports. He still rode rides horses. Yeah, he, and and that kind of activity keeps your mind sharp. I mean, if you look at people like Clint Eastwood, who's ninety one. You look at Ridley Scott. He's eighty three. He's got two movies coming out. The I, I think that's, Shatner looks way better than. Um, I was going to say Elton John. <laughs> Clint Eastwood, you mean? Um, uh, but yeah, Elton. I mean, I think that there's something to be said for that. You just you you got to keep moving. You can't you can't rest on your laurels. Yeah, somebody said uh, being rich helps. Sure, the money the money helps with a lot of the things that you can do. I I, I get that, but at the same time, I mean, you know. You can't deny that this guy's kept his mind sharp as well. And also, I mean, you know, the fact that he's he's got an album out now, his album <laughs> Bill is out. He's he's an author. He he's he's just Talk show done, host. Yeah, I mean, it's just done so much in his life. And there were times in his life when he wasn't wealthy, which he's talked mm -hmm. about a lot. So yeah. He's a crazy. Uh, Superhero Displays is back with a £4.50. He says, Hail, this top tier talent from that Knights of the Display case. Harley is my favorite character from the Arkham games. Arkham games. So I is hyped. Uh, did did so, you order? Did you order that? The Arkham um, Harley? Um, no. Yeah, I didn't either. But am I the Arkham Harley? No, I, I, I'm, I, I'm really thinking about the sideshow Harley, right? To go with because I got it. I got the Superman, the Batman, the Wonder Woman, the Green Lantern. Oh yeah. If I get the Joker, the Harley to go with that, and then I just need the Flash. Um, but we'll look at a couple of what toys uh, soon. Donnefret pa. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Hot Toys has been dropping toys fast and furious over the last week. It's unbelievable what they've released. <laughs> uh, things, so many things are coming out. And today they they put up for pre order Loki and Sylvie from the Loki TV series, which we were taught you and I were talking before we went on today. Yeah, we had a great discussion about how I hated it and how you liked it. <laughs> well, I didn't say exactly how I like. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I'm 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 being uh, surly. Uh, no, we had a great discussion on the first episode that that the, uh, the oh, audience yeah. absolutely loved, um, and I was uh, I was right. Uh, Martino <laughs> Salvoni with uh, a Pat Martino, the patron saint of hot toys and fully articulated. 
Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, and I'm only five days away, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Martino Salomone with a 50 Swiss francs. What? Zwag. You know what? Uh, I believe that five my movie Tango Shalom is actually opening in Switzerland. I nice. believe that we we so he can uh, he can go see it. <laughs> nice. I know. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's the 18th of October that it says it's shipping my enterprise. Oh well, you know I've 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 so I I'd have love the box to have this open clear here. To, to get the to do a video on the opening of the enterprise. Yeah. Oh, it's loads of fun. I've been playing with my pieces. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's first contact, dude. Come on. Yes, I was. I know. Uh, this is this is actually a call back to yesterday's real BBC. Oh, where um, Gary was saying that his favorite uh, TNG movie was um, First Contact, and I was telling him how wrong he was, <laughs> and how it was a terrible film uh, that destroyed the Borg. Yeah, destroyed First Contact. Uh, but uh, I said, I tell you what, though, had a beautiful theme. It had a beautiful did. theme and that that theme for a uh, first contact i think is mwah, chef's kiss oh it's it's fantastic and when when the phoenix finally takes off and there's the realization of that mm. uh it's amazing mm. but yes i actually wrote an article for a magazine called worst contact why first contact is the worst <laughs> star trek movie back when i was i mean people are like you you don't like any modern star trek and i'm like you know what i've been critical of star trek for years I mean, people like First Contact now, but it's 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 problematic. I I I don't I I uh, I've always espoused that there is a well. It used to be two Picards. Now it's three Picards. Yeah, I have always espoused that there's two Picards. There's the series Picard, and then there's the movies Picard, and they're pretty uh, distinguishable. <laughs> um, yes. Well, you know, one's a a thoughtful leader, uh, philosophizer. Uh, the other is is a mental fucking madman who likes to blow things up uh, <laughs> and thinks he's an action hero and loves to kill people with phasers. Uh, and they're very different, very different people. And then there's the third one now that just goes around apologizing for being a man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the movies to me, I've never in my own head, I know it is technically canon, in my own head, the movies are not canon. That it's this is a different, a whole different Picard and and crew, uh, but to me, um, it, it showed that uh, TNG didn't translate to movies well because um, no, you know they're not action movies. Start this this TNG was always uh, a thought provoking show, um, and sure you could have action elements in there, but once you stray from the foundations that your show's been built on and you become a generic action movie, that's when you've lost yourself, really. Um, no, I, I agree. I think that that's, that's, that's one of the frustrations about, you know, if you look at, if you look at something like, you look at Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, it, it has an alien entity that is inadvertently destroying the biosphere of the Earth, mm -hmm. and the crew goes back in time, and uh, has a really interesting task ahead of them. They have to bring, oh, they have to bring humpback whales. whales into the future, and at the yeah. same time, they have to deal with navigating the past and not changing the timeline. And it's wildly entertaining. You know, it's it's fun, and there's no villain. Mm -hmm. You know, and and yet it's got a really interesting message. Villain story. Is time, and yeah, and it's just it's it's delightful and. Um, it's a movie that I like more and more as the years go by. I remember when I first saw it, I was a little disappointed in it because I thought it was a little too slight, but going back and watching it now compared to what we've been getting, especially on TV for the last couple of years from star Trek, <laughs> it's a, it's a masterpiece it's a, of, yeah. <laughs> of, of epic proportion. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, you know, distinctly remember bones in the hospital when they're going to just about to operate on checkoff. And it's just like, you know, these, these like the stone ages with stone these. knives and bear skins <laughs> yeah it's great stuff um yeah and it was just it was just a great complete <laughs> are you from out of space 
No, from Iowa. I work in out of space. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's and that was real, genuine humor. That's great. Do you like Italian? No. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I love Italian, and so do you. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's. I mean, come on. That's genuine character-based humor. Uh, oh man, that was that. I mean, oh dear God. I mean, how about when they're in the antique store and they need money, and Spock is like aren't these a gift from dr mccoy <laughs> kirk leans over they will be again that's they the will beauty be. of it <laughs> i mean come on ah <laughs> uh, see that's uh sometimes less is more and sometimes subtlety is the way forward and good writing always prevails above anything else and that's so why good. so many shows fail today because uh, they uh, they load up their characters with identitarianism and they don't load up the storyline with uh, good story. Uh, so there we go. Like, like just just think of like Picard, where she's playing with her her necklace in the oh, first yeah. episode, and he's just like, "That's a that's a, a really interesting necklace." <laughs> It could mean something. Do you know what it means? No. <laughs> so what? What the fuck is that in there for then? <laughs> Just ah, oh, God, that show is fucking garbage. Uh, okay, let's get a let's get another suit. Yeah, sorry, I've got no chill today whatsoever. That's okay. Uh, You've made me laugh uproariously. I, I just I'm just gonna go back and start. I'm just gonna watch the voyage home tonight. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, or maybe the undiscovered country. I love the undiscovered country. So what? Oh, it's such a good film. Two relics. Two relics from a bygone era. Oh yeah, friends. Holding wanting to hold on to their their uh their uh animosity and anger and desire to fight. Great. Don't stuff. wait for the translation. Answer me now. Yes. Yeah, you were broken for insubordination. <laughs> so good. Uh, and always quoting uh, Shakespeare. Yeah, in to the original be. Klingon. Oh, not to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you haven't read Shakespeare until you've read him in the original yeah, yeah. Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Goddamn, so good. <laughs> it's just, and it just reminds me of the, uh, it just reminds me of the TNG episode where Riker's. Uh, they're doing the um you know the exchange program on the Klingon ship. Oh yeah. And he's <laughs> and he's just like eating and you know, he's prepared himself pretty well. And yep. uh the guy's just like looking at him, he's like, Perhaps we could get one of the women to breastfeed you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they all start laughing at Riker, thinking it's worse that he like looks over, he's like one or both, and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that is awesome. I mean, he knew what's up. Yeah, he knew why can he was so yeah, yeah. And you know what was really great about that episode is that <laughs> is that over the course of that episode, you watch the Klingons who are gonna make fun of him. Riker steps up and they they end up respecting him in the end. And that's, well, that's such that a beautiful thing about the old Klingons. Yeah. Where the it's... guy's just like, you see this? No old Klingons. Why? And Riker's just like, because they died with honor. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, man. And it was just trying to, but it was, I thought that was just so beautiful, though, because it, it just showed the Klingon way. There are no old Klingons because we die before yeah. we get old. Because that is the way that we live. We will live and we live to die in battle. And to die in battle is the greatest honor. Um, and of course, you know, later on, of course, when there was older Klingons, they, you know, they are looked down at. They are, look, are looked down upon that they haven't died uh, younger and with honor. Um, and so you got some wonderful bits with some older Klingons about how kind of resentful they were of of the fact that they had lived or maybe they were more cowardly than their counterparts but that i just thought that was just a wonderful bit because when 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 riker says i bet they died with honor 
And he just, you know, he he looks at Rikers and say, yeah, you know, respectfully say, yeah, yeah, you get it. You 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 get us. You you get it. And he has this like smile on his face, but it's not like a ha ha smile. It's like you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, and of course, those two build up a good uh, a good friendship. Uh, and yeah, God damn it, he used to be so good. I know. <sighs> Mikey Burnham's going to save the universe from blowing up again with the power of the gay. <laughs> well, it's just, it's such a weird thing that, that, you know, uh, even, even that, that sexuality is taken a forefront in this kind of storytelling. I mean, I think of like, I think about World War II. I love World War II movies. Like some of mm -hmm. my favorite, world, one of my favorites is like Where Eagles Dare. Mm -hmm. And while I have no problem with anyone's sexuality, whatever it is, <laughs> would, would you need a scene in Where Eagles Dare where somebody has to, I don't know, uh, express their sexuality while they're on the mission? And would it's you just, like I, a ham sandwich? I, no. I mean, I, my I, boyfriend I, would love one at this time. <laughs> I mean, it's just I, I just find it so strange that, and I understand. Like, I think representation. Uh, is in fact important but when you're talking about action adventure storytelling or superheroic storytelling you know none of those stories have ever necessarily leaned into extreme sexuality even whether it's straight or not you know and and i i feel that that again our 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 great stories are are being polluted and and perverted so to speak by all of this agenda-based storytelling and i don't understand like the great genres that exist like i don't understand why the stories themselves are like our great storytelling forms go back thousands of years mm -hmm. like our great tales of heroism and and when whether it's the greek or roman mythologies and the greeks and romans man uh they had they all kinds it. of sexuality they, happening. They really mixed it up, yeah. I mean, they mixed it up. And yet, there's classical storytelling forms. You know, you all Aristotelian, you know, whatever, the poetics, whatever you want to look at. These, these storytelling forms worked. They worked then and they work now. And I feel that that's what we're really starting to lose is, if, if I, look, if your woke agenda suddenly gave us great storytelling, I'd be like, oh fine i'm all for that but i don't i feel the exact opposite is happening that that our ability to tell great stories is being eroded because of all of this agenda based storytelling and we are going to lose the ability uh of of having these stories anymore because they will all fail us and we'll wonder well what happened what happened to our great our great stories where well, we where have won't. they gone? Uh, they, the the studios might, but we won't. Well, right. I mean, we'll keep what we want. Want, but I. I'm like, but, to but, me, yeah, it, 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 it's things have a a time and a place. Yeah. Depending, like, uh, you want to tell a, a a forbidden love story, um, that's uh, if then you look at something like Broke Back Mountain, great movie. And that's 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 where it fits because that's the that's the nature of the story. You want to turn Q gay in Bond in a throwaway line that you know is going to be cut out for some foreign audiences. That's that is that is virtue signaling. That is pandering right. for for the sake of pandering, and it does no one any good because when you hear, um, oh, Star Trek, Star Wars broke boundaries. When two women kissed in the rise of the sky, Palpatine, and then you hear, oh, by the way, it was actually cut out for Indonesian audiences or da 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 audiences. Then, then you know the insincerity of it. You know the insincerity of it because they can't stand behind it to have it in the film. No, this is part of the film. This is born into the film. So uh, yes, and Hollywood is is now just rampant with that. I mean, this week, of course, we've got gay Superman. Last week we had gay Robin. Uh, then we yes, last year we had gay Aqualad. Then we had we a couple of years ago we had bisexual Wonder Woman. 
Uh, th uh, today, we've got trans one-man army from Jack Kirby now, and it's just... It's wait, just wait, uh, so Omac, o yeah, Omac, Omac yeah, now... Omac's now trans. It's a tra Not only that, they 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 want to give you their pronouns of he, him, they. They're a big muscular woman that wants to go by he, uh, with a shaven pink mohawk. Obviously. <clears throat> well, I, you know, to me, uh, the the question I have then for all of that is okay, but what's the story that you're telling? There isn't one. Is the, the story, story going to be? Is, is a... aren't we great? Aren't we such an ally? Aren't we all a bunch of white saviors? Look how the heterosexual white man saves the gay community in comics. Please all shower me with praise and tell me how wonderbar I am. Well, it, again, I, I think that that the the real question is today we saw something, you know, Shatner going to space. Yeah, baby. And and, and you you ask yourself, now that's a story. Your character that is a, a 90 year old white, let's call him, you know, one of the most virile examples of, of white, white. I mean, I, I you know, it's funny because I've never, I guess it's only my virtue signaling. I mean, my own, um, my, um, my, own, what am I, what I want to say? My, um, um, privilege and, you know, growing up and having William Shatner as a hero of mine, um, it, it was because the character was well-defined and in my youth somebody to emulate now later in life i was a huge captain cisco fan i really loved deep space nine and i love the development that they allowed for avery brooks and what what captain cisco represented and when he got involved in some of the murky morality of bringing the romulan star empire into the dominion war by faking basically faking a murder of a diplomat and he he asks himself in one of the great episodes of the show in the pale moonlight he admits that I'm like, can I live with the fact that I was complicit in murder in order to get the Romulans to join the war effort? And at the end of the episode, it's chilling when he says, I think I can live with it. I can live with it. And you know, he can't. He will be yeah, haunted yeah, yeah. by this decision his mm. the rest of his life. But the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. He needed the Romulans to come in in order to defeat the Dominion. And you're looking at this, and I'm thinking to myself, this isn't, I'm not going, well, this is a story of a black man. I'm thinking, this is Captain Cisco, who yeah. just made one of the most morally compromising decisions of any Star Trek character ever. And I'm not thinking about him, the color of his skin. I'm thinking about him as a human being who just made a very difficult decision to save the fucking universe, to save the Alpha Quadrant, you know? And 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 that hey, was what the story was. Michael Burnham is going to save... The alphabet quadrant. Oh, dude. But I, I just, I, I'm like, these are, these are the great stories, and you know, you muddling the issues of what the stories are are telling. It's a is, fake. You, well, that there you go. I mean, that's all of that was part of it, and and I, I think about all of our great stories, and you know, this is what we're going to miss out on. Our, our, our great stories for future generations are going to be compromised. Um, just to make sure that that they fit it for a period of time that doesn't really matter and is actually detrimental to our great storytelling. Ah, oh, dear God. Wokeness is a cancer. Uh, Tim with a five euro says, Hey, Az, been watching your channel for quite some time now. First time making it in to see your countdown live today. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, Johnny GTO with the $5 says, Rocket Man. I wonder if he's saying Rocket Man on the way up. Rocket Man. <laughs> Burning feet. Uh, Griever Enterprises with a $2. Afraid of no ghosts. Bust it makes me feel good. Yes, it does. Uh, the, the, uh, the mainstream media are giving Ghostbusters bad reviews, which means it's obviously good. Because <laughs> they're all crying about Ghostbusters 2016. It's just, they're just giving fans what they want. It's just toxic fan service. It's just like, oh, great. This film's going to be great then. Go awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Did, did you read the Guardian review of Ghostbusters oh. <laughs> Afterlife? <laughs> it, was a, 
all joking aside, it was embarrassing. It's if if I was like the editor of the Guardian, they would never write for the Guardian again. I honestly couldn't believe that that review. I That's mean, I guess where I... we are now. It's the masks off, the the facades off. It's all politically uh my it's all politically motivated now. They don't want to review a film. They've got no interest in reviewing a, reviewing a film. It's about my ideology is better than your ideology in my eyes, and how dare you reject my ideological movie for this idol this movie? It's just it, 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 I would. This is how pathetic we got. That's why Main Street. This is why Kotaku, Polygon, all this. That's why it's all dead. That's why people are coming to YouTube. That's why people are coming to to regular people like Gary and just some guy and Eric July and uh, Yellow Flash and. Uh, other, you know, plenty of other people. It's because they want to hear somebody who's at least going to be honest about it and give you their fucking honest opinion. Yeah, actually, it wasn't that bad. It was all right, or eh, it wasn't so good. Actually, uh, not they know it's not going to be politically motivated. Uh, however, they say it. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, if a, if a film's good, it's a film's good. But these this mainstream media now, it's it's so laughable. Uh, and it's the same with video games. The, it's, these aren't game reviewers. They're activists. They've got no um, place in this industry. They've, they've forsaken the customer. They've forsook, they forsaken them long ago. You know what I'm getting this week as? And I got to say, I'm probably more excited about it than I should be. Colonostomy. <laughs> no, but I would. <laughs> Sounds good to me. No, I'm getting the PlayStation 5 Hot Wheels game. Nice. I'm yeah, very that's a ton of fun. I'm very excited about that. Probably more. I love driving games and that game. I played an early, you know, preview of that game. I'm so excited to have it because I used to play micro machines on the Mega Drive, I think, or Genesis in your case. Man, I can't wait. I can't wait to get it. And I would hate it if somebody told me that that game isn't woke enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not inclusive enough. Uh yeah. Mr. Tickletron with a Canadian two Canadians says today a shat was fired into space. <laughs> Trek theme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Sylvester with a five dollar says this is a great day. Everybody in the world needs to do this. I hope I can maintain what I feel now. I don't want to lose it. Shatner. That's right. Now there's going to be a down you when you when you come down from it, dude. It's going to be it's going to be awful. But uh, my god, my god, what have I done? Oh, what you had to do <laughs> turn death into a fighting chance for life. <laughs> oh man, do. that is so beautiful as well. With the Enterprise is burning, I was my god, Bob. What have I done? <laughs> what do you always do, Jim? What you had to do. Oh, I sucked. <laughs> oh, characters. Remember them? Uh, Nick's Radio with the $5 says, I love the line from Armageddon. Enough with this anomaly horse shit. What is this thing? <laughs> the irony is that was a joke. <laughs> that's how you put in discovery that's what they actually say there's an anomaly off the starboard bow what is it and it's an anomaly <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's called an anomaly you fucking read that <laughs> um mip oh my mip ral chago joe joe g woof with a five new zealand uh super sticker of keep it up thank you Philippe Abrigo with a 2,500 Chilean pesos says, <laughs> you guys check what Elton is doing with uh, Elon. Not Elton. <laughs> Why have I got Elton John on the fucking brain? Rocket Man. It's Rocket Man. That's what it is. I love Rocket Man. I love that song. Me too. 
Um, you guys check what Elon is doing with Starship. Man, we should all be excited. AF, cheers and burps. <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. What he's doing is amazing. Uh, what they're both doing is, and it's great to see, it's great to see them both doing stuff. So, um, yeah. Marksman of 117B with a $5. Hail, sorry, as. But if my slave doesn't know their gender, then I'm throwing them into the ditch and getting a new one. <laughs> this is the right. It is the right of conquest. Absoluters. <laughs> Le Chevalier de Lise with a five Canadian. Hail, Robin, as. The word slave comes from the Slavic people. Slav. And they are pretty pale. Just FYI, live long and prosper. Oh, as we said, slaves are of all uh, ages, gender, uh, two genders, races, uh, colors. Uh, but uh, there's now seems to be just a very nice narrative of. Well, no, 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 only the only the blacks were slaves uh, for a lot of people because um, they're rewriting history, revisionist history, and it's sad. It's scary never mind sad uh tommy ratanen with but they're, they they won't be able to do the hustle if they didn't uh with a 10 euro it says how about brexit any food i got food i got a shop yesterday uh le chevalier de Lise with a 10 canadian says seconds a second start right straight on till morning uh would be a better quote i was too bullied i too was bullied for my love of superheroes and Star Wars. And we are bullied through what we love, you guys. Yeah, I was bullied for being a nerd, but I also did sporty shit at school as well when I was at school. So I kind of got away with it a lot of the time because I could I could bridge both worlds. But um, yeah, I used to like sneak into the news agent to buy the comic and get out before anyone saw me and stuff it down my top and then get home and then get out and Start reading it. That's how you had to do it. Uh, Marksman 117B again with a $20 says, Captain Slug, humanity has spent its life advancing to the future to reach the peak of the mountain. And now, only now do I see that we have even reached the top. <laughs> we found the base. And I have never felt more elated. Oh, it's garbage from me. Uh, Andrew Matthews with a five pound says, I was shocked. Uh, episode six of Squid Game when the sperm whale ate the squid. <laughs> Damn it. Spoiler alert. The gag is a gag. Is, he's gagging. I he's know. gagging. Uh, Georgia, you're gay, maybe, with a five Canadian says, As can you suggest a 90s Jean Paul Valley Azrael, not Asbats, statuette <clears throat> figure? and a reasonable mix of quality costs. Uh, good to see you back, Bob. Love from Newfoundland. Right. Now, there isn't a, uh, a sculpt of Azrael. Um, if you wanted an Azrael figure, then you would have to... It would have to be a blister pack... Uh, toy now then the best one that i could recommend that would probably set you back about a hundred dollars 150 dollars was they did do a nightfall set of figures uh which had bane tengu bruce wayne uh and it had an azrael i do believe and an as bat and a then then it had a nightwing uh as well um there are a couple of other blister pack azraels just like on card blisters just uh do azrael toy but there's nothing one in six and there's nothing statued uh for a jean paul valley azrael i'm afraid and I own virtually every Azrael toy I think they've made. <laughs> um, but there you go, dude. Uh, Stetson's Gold with a two pound. It says, glad you saw Squid Game. Hail, Rob! And Philippe Ebrigo again with 2,500 Chilean pesos. 
Hey, Az, smell that Darth figure once more. Then you can run for US president. <laughs> Sweet. I'm going to do that. I'm going to sniff it everywhere. Uh, where did we get to? Le Chevalier Delice with the two Canadians says, Hello. This is a courtesy super chat. Please don't yell. Pirate Queen with a five dollar says, "I hope that you and Rob do an OG Star Trek watch cast. Uh, we need more of you in our lives. Much love to you." Oh, thank you, Pirate Queen. Uh, Andy uh, Linden with a one pound eighty says, "Fuck it, bye." <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> Doctor Who Twitter just tweeted out that uh, Jodie Whittaker and Mandeep Gill have rapped on Doctor Who and I responded to them with fuckity bye <laughs> from, uh, of course, the great Peter Capaldi in Thick of It as Malcolm Tucker. Fuckity bye. <laughs> uh, Paul Turner with a $10 says, hey, you guys should read the coding of the American mind. In it, the author explains that the left has been taken over by three great untruths. One of them being, what doesn't kill me makes me weaker. I'm a, I'm a stick to comics for the minute. <laughs> uh, Alexander Kelly with a two dollar says, spaceship, large cock shape, and lasted only two minutes. But it penetrated the atmosphere, dude. Yeah, it and that's did. All it, it, needed it, to do. it had some insertion into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> it sounds like me, and I'm okay with that. Um, and everybody Ath came home. And everyone came home. <laughs> uh, Arthur Lionheart with a 1,000 Huffington Posts says, Hi, this is a courtesy super chat to tell you that we like your show. Ah! Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Detritus with a five dollar says, Hey guys, got my first big chief, John Pertwee, one in six. It's beautiful. Gary sent me photographs. Nice. And I have no clue how to change the out the uh, change out the different hands without breaking any advance for new. You you literally just pull them out. Yeah. That's Pop you them out. I know you might be scared to do so, but you literally just grab the four push the the sleeve back. So you grab the forearm before the joint and then literally just grab the hand and then pull it out and if you snap the joint don't panic uh a you should have got spares in your box anyway and b if you don't you can pick them up for pennies on ebay so don't panic but yeah it's just pop them out pop one out and then put stick them back it in. in that's it there you go sir creamy lasagna lynch with a five pound says, oh my God, fuck you people. This is a courtesy call to remind you. No time to die is still shit. Oh, that, that film, man. Uh, Aitken yeah. with an eight Australian. Today's writers uh, took Little Britain's Barbara Cartland skit seriously as writing 101. Um, paragraph one. In the beginning, uh, then just go to the bookshelf and grab a book and fill in the rest. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, Antoine Dennison with a $2 says, was it that good or did we have lower standards? Oh, you see, it was well, it was well good. It was well good. We didn't know how lucky we had it. Uh, Shane O'Reilly with a one euro fiddy connoisseur mustache. Nice. And Shane O'Reilly with a one euro filly, one euro fiddy, love hearts. And then Shane O'Reilly with a one euro fiddy, what zwag. Uh, somebody said uh, they got the punctuation wrong. It's not no time to die. It's no time to die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marksman of 117B with a two dollar says, Has either of you seen the Soviet World War II film Come and See? Oh, dude, I own oh, that movie. The submarine is that the submarine one? No, okay. no, no, no. I look, Movies. that movie is brutal, but oh, one that's, of the great, true, isn't it? It's one of the great anti war films 
I'd call it anti-war films ever made. It is tremendous. Uh, I can't I can't watch World War Two films, World War One films anymore. I can't, or, or <laughs> war films in general anymore. I can't do it. I've seen too many. I've seen too many harrowing harrowing, harrowing one. I I don't want this to sound in any way trivial. I get it. Oh I yeah. Don't, I don't. I just can't. I just can't put myself through it anymore. You know. I get it. Sure. No, uh, it's, I, I've it's... been through too much. <laughs> Um, Andy LN, LDN with a f uh, four pound fitty says Christopher Biggins on Lorraine today saying how it's insulting. Create new characters. You'll have to explain context to RMB. Uh, well, Christopher Biggins is a big old, and it, it, this is not in a disrespectful, this is in a very respectful way. He's a big old gay, you know, <laughs> he's a big old fruity ass gay. And he's awesome. We love him in the UK. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he, he's right. Stop nicking characters. Create new characters. And and ay 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 ay. Uh, was Christopher Biggins I'm sure he was like married to a woman at one stage? Yeah, people change. Um. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was married to Beatrice, Beatrice Norbury from seventy one to seventy four. Then uh, he married his uh, male spouse in two thousand and six. Um, but yeah, he's um, yeah, he's lovely. He's a lovely, lovely, cuddly. Well, he used to be a lovely, cuddly. It's lost a lot of weight now. He used to be a lovely, cuddly teddy bear of a of a dude. Did the uh, Christopher Biggins. Uh, Taran, uh, Gast with a $5, says, everyone talks about Captain Kirk going into space. I'm more amused that TJ Hooker finally got the recognition he deserved. <laughs> Absolutely. I love TJ Hooker as well. By God. Uh, Keaton Smith with a one pound super sticker of a big smiley face. Thank you, Keaton. And a couple more. 200 watt studio with a $5 says, the potential for knowledge and advancement is equally great. Risk, equally great. <laughs> equally great. Risk is our business. Risk. <laughs> Risk is our business. That's what, That's what this the Starship is all about. about. That's, That's why, why we're here. We're here. But there you go. Boom. Wonderful. Jobs McGee uh, with a five pound says, Hi, Az. This is a courtesy super joke. Oh, fuck yourself. To let you know, it's time to treat yourself to another what toy. May I recommend another five oh first? Uh, I might actually just do that. So, <laughs> I actually might just do that. And uh, there we go, Robert. Two hours. I think this is a perfect. Specific. What a great! It's a great way to end. We didn't yeah, talk much about toys. I'm gonna have more toys. You know what I'm gonna have? You know what I've been? I've started building Martino Sumoni's Enterprise, and I'm loving it. And I'll have that all ready to go. I have lots of stuff. Next to show. week, I might, I might, if it's a right, if it arrives on the eighteenth, nineteenth, then uh, this time next week, uh, I might have my enterprise here. Yeah, and I'm hoping by next week, I'm, I, you know what, I, you know what, I should just make a pledge and get it done. I will show a video of the mm. Rob Observatory and everything in it on our show next week. Lovely job, please, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm setting my own uh my own gauntlet. I'm throwing a gauntlet down. <clears throat> Chucking that gauntlet down. Anywho, yeah. everyone, thank you so much uh for shing by today. Uh massive thanks to my mods as always for doing your moderific stuff. Uh mega thanks as well to everyone who hit the super chat button, hit the uh, join button and became a member of the channel, supported the channel through a super. Uh very, very grateful indeed uh rob is there anything that you'd like to uh promote before we go no uh, no just you know you can find me on instagram uh robert by burnett find me on twitter at burnett rm and find me on my own youtube channel the burnett work and if you live in boca raton florida or palm springs you can still go see tango shalom uh tango shalom the movie that uh, is actually all about inclusion and religious plurality and people achieving their dreams uh that will be on VOD on October 29th. And if you live in Russia, Tango Shalom opens throughout the, uh, what is it, the, the CIS 
on November 4th. Wunderbar! So until next week, folks, we'll be over on Robert's channel for Fully Articulated, same time, midday, uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Uh, UK. Uh, yeah, clocks don't go forward. Uh, fought back. So uh, yeah, I think it's the weekend after, but we'll get we'll get to that when we get to that anyway. So until yes. then, uh, be seeing you. Be seeing you. All right, oh, sir. Uh, oh, what? Whoa, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Man of War 665, neighbor of the beast with 665 super chat. Try to sneak this in. I've declared an armistice <laughs> in the scale war for this week until our host gets his streaming legs back. But come next week, have at thee, gentlemen. You and the 12th scale. At yeah. hell's heart, I stab at thee. Yeah, I spit my last 12th scale figure at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be seeing you. Be seeing you.